morning. Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church. It's good to be here with you in God's house. Special welcome to those who are with us online. Thanks for coming. Leave a like and a comment. Uh, be friendly with your brothers and sisters uh, who are worshiping with you there. And I'd like to welcome our other visitors today. We even have a, one of our sisters from uh, Ottawa here with us today. Glad to have you with us there with us. Our focus for worship today will be God's perspective on wealth that uh, it would be good for us to adopt. All the scripture and the, the hymns will reflect that today. God bless our worship and we'll begin with our first hymn. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just 
and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the Lord of mercy responsibly. the treasures you have stored up for us in heaven, that we may never despair, but always rejoice and be thankful for the riches of your grace. 
your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today's first reading comes from Ecclesiastes chapters 1 and 2. This is uh, King Solomon speaking here, possibly the, the wealthiest man ever to have lived. And he learned by experience the very limited values of earthly possessions. The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. Meaningless. Meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. I, the teacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. I applied my mind to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under the heavens. What a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, chasing after the wind. I hated all the things I had toiled for under the sun, because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish. Yet they will have control over all the fruit of my toil, into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. For a person may labor with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and they must leave all they own to another who has not toiled for it. This too is meaningless and a great misfortune. What do people get for all the toil and anxious striving for which they labor under the sun? All their days, their work is grief and pain. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This too is meaningless person can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in their own toil. This too, I see, is from the hand of God, for without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 90, and we'll speak portions of that psalm responsibly. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world. Everlasting is everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust. You turn to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, like a watch in the night. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Today's second reading is from Colossians chapter 3. We're going to hear Jesus tell us in a few moments that life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. So if that's the case, then... What is life about? Paul tells us here. It's about how we, in baptism, die to sin and are raised up with Christ. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. 
Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourself of all these things, all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being created and being renewed in the knowledge and the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, for Christ is all and is in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we honor the gospel. comes from Luke chapter 12 and will serve as the basis for the sermon. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to, to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Right, I invite the children to come forward for the children's message. It's one of my daughter Millie's favorite toys. It's a little, little puppy dog here. It's got really nice fur. You want to feel him? Okay. Want to pet him? Maybe later. <laughs> see, how, see how fluffy he is? Yeah, he's very Yeah. Do you guys have, uh, what are your favorite toys? What are your favorite things? When you get home today, what are you going to play? Computer? Yep. Switch. Switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are pretty fun. Yeah, you know, uh, we have a lot of favorite things that we, uh, that we like to play with. We just we like them a lot. But uh, we can't take them with us everywhere we go, can we? 
like if you were going to go spend uh, the afternoon at the pool at Perry Wins Park here. Probably wouldn't take your switch. Probably wouldn't take your computer. And I wouldn't even take the little puppy here. Because yeah, he would get all wet and nasty and he wouldn't be so soft anymore after going in the pool. And your computers would be ruined. We can't just take all of our favorite things wherever we go. And that's what we learned from what Jesus just told us in the Bible reading we just heard. He, he told us a story about a foolish man who had a lot of favorite things and he wanted to have a big party with all of them. But then he died and he wasn't able to enjoy them at all. He wasn't able to take his stuff with him in death. Yeah. That's what the God wants us to learn today, that all of our favorite things here in life, our puppies, our computers, all of our stuff, we can't take them with us when we go to be with God in heaven. But that's okay, because heaven is going to be so much better. Yeah, what's a baby? Yeah, you're not going to be able to take the food with you to heaven. But Jesus is going to have better food for us there. Heaven is going to be awesome. It's, it's kind of like a surprise party. We don't know exactly what it's going to be like, but we know it's going to be awesome, even though we can't take our toys along with us. Let's, uh, let's thank God for that today. Let's bow our heads. Close our eyes and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for your son Jesus who came here and, and died to save us from our sins so he could take us to be with you in heaven. Thank you for promising us an even better place with even better things for us to do. Thank you for promising to take us there. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up again today. Continue with our next hymn.
King Solomon was the wisest and the richest believer in God in history. And he thought earthly wealth was meaningless. Did you hear that from the first reading today from Ecclesiastes? He says meaningless, meaningless, everything utterly meaningless. And yes, even the billions of dollars that he had. King Solomon understood something critical, that wealth is one of the biggest obstacles to a meaningful relationship with God. He knew the truth long before Jesus said those famous words that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. There's something about money that corrupts people. The scriptures say it is a root of many evils. I don't want you to get the impression that this message today is just for the rich and the upper middle class. Jesus says today in Luke chapter 12, watch out. Be on your guard against greed, all kinds of it. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. You don't need to have a lot of money to struggle with greed. Jesus says, watch out. Life doesn't consist in an abundance of possessions, nor does it consist in the pursuit of them. Jesus told us a parable today about the meaninglessness of wealth in this thing, called the parable of the rich fool. And the story goes like this. There's a, a rich farmer who has a fantastic harvest season. He's got so much grain, he doesn't know what to do with it. He doesn't even have enough room to store it all. And so he says to himself, what am I going to do? Oh, I know. I'm going to tear down my barns. I'm going to build bigger ones. That's where I'll store all of it. And then he says to himself, you know what? <laughs> You're doing pretty good sit back, relax, take it easy, eat, drink, celebrate. But then God speaks to this man and he says, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? You know, at first, when you hear this parable, uh, you might wonder, what exactly was this man's mistake? Because it seems like on the surface, what he did was okay. He planned ahead. He saved, wanted to save up his money, protect his assets. We do that. The problem was his focus, his priorities. His focus was on what he had been given and not the one who gave it. God was nowhere in this man's thoughts and plans. But God had been there all along. In fact, God was the one who had given him all those things that he had. You can't ignore God forever, especially not when you meet him face to face in death. When this rich fool died, all of a sudden he had nothing. Now who would get all of his things? This parable has been important for God's people to hear in every generation. Man, especially this one. Especially because of our current culture here in North America, our consumer culture. The what can I get? And then how can I get more culture? Our culture doesn't guard against Greed, like Jesus tells us to here, it actually says that greed is okay. It's actually good that that having more and bigger and better things actually means that you'll have it made, that you will have succeeded in life. 
I'm sure we all know, money doesn't buy happiness. But why do we act like it does? Why do we think like it does? We know money doesn't buy happiness in the back of our minds, but we're tempted to think that, well, it sure helps. How do we have a godly view of earthly wealth when everything in our culture is about money? Today, as we meditate on this parable of the rich fool, we're going to learn to embrace the wisdom of Solomon, that earthly wealth is meaningless without Christ. Jesus told us this so we wouldn't be fooled. And we would be foolish to think that we are unaffected here in Canada about, you know, because of how our culture views what we live here. And we are affected by the world around us. Discontentment and greed are contagious. Which of these things have you thought before? If I only had this much more then I wouldn't need to work as hard. If I had this, then things would be better for my family. My family would be happier. If I only got to this point, then I wouldn't need to worry anymore. Now, after thinking one of those things, did you, did you get what you wanted? Were you satisfied? hope so. But I know how this goes more often than not when we, when we get what we want then we crave the next best thing. And it goes like this. You know, first we want a phone. When we get a phone, then we want the next gen version. We want a car. We get a car. Then, because this is Alberta, we want a truck. <laughs> we get a house. We want a better house. It never ends. We're tempted to think that having more and better things will make us happy when actually they often, in the end, make us feel empty. Spare yourself the disappointment. Learn this wisdom that Solomon acquired. Learn this lesson that Jesus is telling us today. These things aren't going to fill the holes in our lives. A solid, meaningful life with God isn't about having a bunch of possessions or money or power. Those things bring happiness, maybe for a time, but it doesn't last. Jesus reminds us where true fulfillment comes from. It actually comes as a gift from God. God cultivates Fulfillment in our hearts through thankfulness and contentment for what we already have. And we already have so much. God doesn't want you to feel bad for the things that you have. He wants you to feel content. So let's think about what, what can we be content with? What are the things God has richly blessed us with? We'll start with just the small things, the physical things that we have. Think about what's in your pockets right now, in your closets at home or in your garage. If we're honest with ourselves, we have way more than we actually need. The scriptures say if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. We have so much more. Some of us, we We've been so blessed that we not only have trucks, but we have trailers to haul behind our trucks. We are so richly blessed. And every good and useful thing we have is a gift from God, given out of his grace, in spite of our many sins. Now compare that to the, the rich spiritual blessings that we have in Christ. Christ himself is a gift. He was free. But he wasn't, you know, he didn't come cheap. He 
cost him his life when he came here for us. If we want to appreciate the greatest of God's blessings and have contentment in this life, let's talk about the value, how God values us. Jesus valued us so much that when he came here, he was the almighty God come to earth. He actually forsook his own comfort. And instead of a life full of leisure and luxury, as the Son of God could, and could have and deserves, he was willing to endure poverty, pain, suffering, and even the shame of dying on a cross for us. He was willing to die for us, to save us from sin. He was willing to become poor so we could be rich. All this he did to give us the blessings of spiritual wealth, forgiveness of sins, souls, that are saved, to be loved, to be valued. That's who we are in, in Jesus Christ. Those spiritual blessings, that's, that's a type of wealth that cannot be lost in the stock market. It cannot be stolen or taken from you. No matter how much or how little you have, you have that. Earthly wealth is really meaningless when you compare it the rich spiritual blessings that we have in Christ. And you might be thinking, okay, Pastor, I, I get it. Um, the blessings for my soul are more important than the ones for my body. Okay, but we still need earthly wealth to survive. We still need to live. We need to get to work somehow. And well, how do we plan for the future? Right? That's important, but what about, what about retirement? Is earthly wealth really meaningless? It is, especially when you realize the greatest retirement is heaven. When the rich fool in this parable says to himself, you have plenty of Plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. It sounds like he was ready to retire. But he died before he was able to enjoy any of it. You can't pull a U-Haul behind your hearse. Jesus doesn't want us to fall into the trap of thinking life is all about having a bunch of stuff. It's not about saving up for retirement and enjoying it. That's not what life is about. In uh, my studies this past week, I was reading a, a commentary on this, on this parable. And I'd like to share a, a quote from that commentary with you, partially because of, I think it's very insightful, uh, but also because I love saying this guy's name. So uh, this is a commentary written by Klein Snodgrass. <laughs> And uh, it, his name just cracks me up every time. Um, but yeah, anyways, Dr. Snodgrass, he says, we're not content to make a living. We want to make a killing, or at least enough to retire early. He's saying our, our culture has become obsessed with the idea of working towards retirement. You know, whether you've been able to start saving up already, or maybe you've been saving up for a while, Maybe you're enjoying retirement. Good retirement is on most of our minds. The experts are telling us to save up more and more at younger and younger ages or else we're not gonna have enough in our retirement. It's not gonna be that great. Satan will use that to tell you that your number one priority in life is to be financially stable, that you can find rest if only you're not living paycheck to paycheck, if only you're not struggling every week, if only you have an emergency fund, if only you have a good retirement plan. Satan says, if only we had these things, we wouldn't have to worry. That's a lie. The way Jesus talks, the more money we have, the more challenging 
our relationship with God gets. Our lives are uncertain. They're fragile. We have so little control over what happens to us. We could lose our possessions or our lives at any time. Our plans for our earthly wealth are at best temporary. Our earthly wealth is not going to buy us any happiness when we're dead. You see how earthly wealth, especially when you look at it, the end of life, it, it's meaningless. It's especially when you realize the ultimate retirement is heaven. We cannot be certain of even a temporary rest in this life, but we are certain because of the grace of Jesus, heaven is our retirement. Heaven is our rest. Don't be like that rich fool who thought life was all about eating, drinking, and celebrating with all of his things that he had abruptly taken away. Jesus says that is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich toward God. So what does that mean? What does it mean to be rich toward God? That's something worth meditating on. First off, you can start with this. Realize that God has been rich toward you and thank him for it. God has graciously given you so much. Realize that no matter about, no matter the amount of earthly wealth you have, you are always, in God's eyes, truly rich. What makes a person truly rich comes through faith in Jesus. To be rich toward God means to possess the most important things you could have in life, and that is pardon and peace and a life full of purpose that is valued by God, salvation from sin. All that Jesus has given to you. We are rich. To be rich toward God means that you have treasure stored up in heaven, a treasure earned for you by your Savior, that will win for you ultimate retirement with God. If you're wondering, okay, so if earthly wealth is indeed meaningless, then what do I do with it? What do I do with what I have? You're asking the right question. What do you do with the things that you have? Do we sell it all and give it to the poor? We'll actually hear Jesus tell us that next week. So that is actually an option. But what we can do, for sure, is put our money in its place. Put our possessions in their place. And I'm not talking about finding the right storage facility. I'm talking about put it in the right place in your priorities. You can't serve both God and money. You can serve one or the other. So serve God. And use your wealth to serve in this world. Worship God. Use your wealth for the things that God wants. Support your family. Support the spread of the gospel through your local church. Use your wealth to benefit your neighbor, your community. God has been rich toward us, so we can be rich toward our neighbors. Love God. Love our neighbors. Use your wealth to do that. If you've ever seen a homeless person give away half their sandwich, it doesn't take much. You don't need much to be generous to others. And after Jesus welcomes us to heaven, we're going to kick back and we're going to relax with King Solomon. Yes, the 
the blissful retirement of heaven is for all who believe in Jesus. No matter what status they had in this life, we're all going to the same place. We're going to sit back and relax with King Solomon, and we're going to laugh. No matter how much money we had in our wallets, all along we had the keys to a city paved in gold. All the while, the God of the universe knew our names and he loved us. So what if we lacked recognition in this life? God, God knows us. God loves us. Our laughs and echo through the hallowed halls of heaven about the meaninglessness of all the wealth here that we did or didn't have. God grant us thankful and content hearts until then. Amen. Please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. <laughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn. We haven't sung this one in a while, so it'd be good. Uh, if you want, you can open up our new blue hymnals to hymn number 868. We did used to sing this before the pandemic, but, um, but it has been a while, so you can open up the hymnals for that. <laughs>
God, our Father, our lives are they pass quickly, but you endure forever. Teach us to make the most of every day so we avoid inciting your anger and instead find our everlasting refuge in you. We live and rule with the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Continue with our offerings to the Lord. stand for prayer. Blessed Lord, you've given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may claim the blessed hope of everlasting life. For Jesus Christ, our Lord, lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our final hymn.
once again for joining us for worship, to, to soak in God's word and to learn and grow in wisdom from it. Just a few announcements here. Uh, next Sunday, we'll have worship as usual, 10 a.m. We uh, actually had uh, some baptism scheduled for today. Uh, unfortunately, they were postponed um, last minute. The father of the kids being baptized uh, had to work on Sunday all of a sudden. So um, I think the baptisms may be next Sunday, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'll have to reschedule those. Uh, there is a biggest new announcement is um, changes to our our volunteer scheduling system. Well, actually, there really hasn't been a system up to this point. Uh, we're actually getting the system in place. Um, and uh, our sister, Lindsay Spry, has set up um, a scheduling system through a website service called Sign Up Genius. Some of you might be familiar with it. It's really easy. So if you're one of our volunteers already, um, you've received an email from Lindsay and you just gotta read her instructions. You click on the link, it takes you to the website uh, and then you can sign up for the Sundays that, uh, that work for you, that you want to serve uh, and volunteer. So um, please, uh, if, you're in, if you're not a volunteer yet uh, for Sunday morning, we, we need greeters and ushers and people to operate the camera and the PowerPoint. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful ways you can serve the Lord and make worship possible. Uh, if you're interested in any of that and you're not yet signed up, just talk to me or Lindsay. We'll get you on the list. Um, but please, um, yeah, make use of this, this sign-up genius. It will make all of our lives easier. Um, you won't have me calling you the day before. Please, we need somebody to do this. Um, this will make things easier for all of us, I think. And it's possible that maybe it won't work and we'll try something different, but um, we have to at least try it first. Uh, so try this system Lindsay is setting up, and we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Lastly, there's um, if you're interested, if you know somebody's interested in learning more about Jesus um, or Christianity in general, I have a Bible class that I do with people I meet. Um, I'm pretty flexible in my schedule, so I can meet people at the time that are convenient for them. So if you know somebody who wants to learn more and grow in their faith in Jesus, or even be introduced to him, uh, get them connected with me and. Uh, and I'll study the Bible with them. That's uh, Faith Builders Bible Study, what that's called. That is all for now. There is uh, no Bible study today. We were originally going to have a, a celebration of the baptisms. Um, it didn't turn out. Uh, so we'll, we'll just have some fellowship time, and if somebody wants to make coffee, you can enjoy some of that. One announcement. Yeah, I talked about how to keep us there as an assistant. Yeah. So are we supposed to be getting in? Notification email when is the time to volunteer because sometimes you but you sign up for okay, let me say September. Then it's a little bit longer from now. Mm -hmm. But you don't really know what you already said because I was trying to go back to that from yesterday. I couldn't go back to see what I volunteer for. So if it's okay, whoever that is designing that system to put a notification or are you going to be checking it? Say okay, Mr. Aboki, Sunday you are volunteering for so 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 so, mm -hmm. so that we will know ahead. Okay, we are volunteering to tell to sign up. You forget that uh, you already signed up for the system that uh, you yeah. have a chance for this Sunday. Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, so actually, that one one very useful aspect of of Sign Up Genius is it will um, automatically send an email reminder to the people who are signed up that week. Uh, so the week of, uh, I wonder if there's, there might even be customizable options. You might even be able to choose when you get the reminder. Right now, I think the reminder is set up for two days before. So like Friday, you get an email reminder saying, you're, you're up for this Sunday. Um, so yes, there is, there's an automatic reminder system as a part of the program, which is, really, really nice. Otherwise, it's on Lindsay or me or somebody else to craft emails every week uh, to remind people. So that is a really cool aspect of, of Sign Up Genius, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you sign up, yeah, what we have right now, if you go on to Sign Up Genius, there's a schedule for the next three months, so from August to October. And so yeah, you can sign up. We have enough volunteers right now that you can sign up maybe once a month. Um, and we should be able to fill every spot. Um, 
give everybody a chance to serve and kind of spread spread the, the work. Um, but yeah, if you sign up for a date, it would also be good to put in your calendar to have multiple, multiple reminders. Shane, the email that it sends back to you has lots of calendar invites, so you just have to open it up and see, you know, if you're logging on to your computer. Really? So, it, so there's multiple ways it can integrate with your calendar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome, yeah. Thanks for your for, for the comment session, what do you put in? Just put the names of those who what you are going to do. Um, I think there's, there's a list. For each Sunday, there's it has all the positions: yeah. greeter, usher, PowerPoint clicker, camera operator, and so you just fill in the name of the person who will serve okay. in each position. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good question. Thank you. All right, and God bless the rest of your week. I'll greet you. Uh, we'll do what we used to do. I'll, I'll greet. I can greet everybody at the back. I think that's before the pandemic. That's that's what people did. Is that right? Yes, I'll be standing in these, these double doors right back here uh, to greet you on the way out. Thank you again.